Hey everybody, Mike here. So in this video, we're going to be pouring a stamped concrete walkway using colored concrete. This is going to be an ashlar slate stamp. So if you want to stick around towards the end of the video, you'll get to see just how good this thing turned out. The color we put in the concrete was called Lannan Stone. And it turns it kind of like a, you can see kind of like a tannish, brownish, light brownish color. They kind of wanted it to go with the house. They didn't really want this gray. So you'll see just how well it went when we get done washing and sealing this towards the end of the video. But it was four feet wide. You know, it was about 45 feet long. And we put a mat of steel in here. We came in and did the forming. We did the rebar. We put a mat of rebar, 3 8 rebar in this. The homeowner took care of all the, the subgrade work, the gravel work. So he... He dug out all the sod and the loam, put in the gravel, got it leveled out, and then we came in and did the foreman. So today on pour day, we're gonna we're actually pouring a big patio and a walkway out behind the house too. That'll be in a different video. So this is just one part of the, the pour here today. So Luke and Tia are getting the concrete poured out, and then Darren's doing the screeding, I'm doing the raking. We've got about a six inch slump on this. That walkway slopes a little bit away from the house, about a half an inch, so any water that gets on it will run off. And this is what it looks like after we bowl float it. So it, it really, we use a 3 8 mix. So a 4,000 3 8 mix, got fiber mesh in it. We also have air entrainment in our concrete because our concrete gets a lot of freeze and thaw cycles in the winter. So I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna get it bowl floated here, and then we're gonna, you know, sit and have to let it wait for a little bit until it sets up enough so we can get on it with the stamps. But the next thing we do is once the concrete's firm enough, is we're gonna mag float out the surface, get our edges all edged, and get them rounded off. That just ends up making the stamp job look a lot nicer. Now the mag floating we do is, you know, we want to get all the bowl float lines out give us a really nice surface to stamp and that's what that's what mag and we don't have to steel trow our concrete here in Maine we just mag float it and it comes out looking beautiful now I'm gonna get the we use a release powder on our stamp jobs very very seldom will we use a liquid release up here in Maine mostly it's all mostly powder we just prefer the powder better we think it gives a little bit better final look but some guys like the liquid, and then they permatique it with a colored uh, liquid afterwards, and that's perfectly fine too. This just works good for us. We're using, this is a charcoal release on top of this, so it's, most of this black release is going to wash off in the end, but it will leave it highlighted really nice. Now setting this first stamp is the key. You want to make sure you get this in place, especially with these Ashler ones because they all lock into each other with that little notch you see up there in that left hand corner. It doesn't really matter which way you place that first one, it's kind of preference, but I, I prefer to place the notch so it's up into the concrete and not down towards the board at first. And we got a whole set of these Ashler stamps, but Darren and Luke are using the other ones. There's about 11 in a set. They're using the other ones out back. So Tia and I, we're going to get going on this front walk because they're both setting up pretty good. I want to make sure I pull that first one and see how it looks under there. Everything looks well, then we just keep moving on. But it's just a matter of setting these, you know, in each notch so and you always want to set them the same way you don't want to turn your stamps at all and we're just the concrete still fairly soft at this point I don't really want to walk on the stamps yet but I want to make sure I stay ahead of this because it's pretty warm out today so we're just tamping the pattern in by hand at this point These Ashler stamps, they got a pretty deep groove on them, so you you don't want to make you want to make sure you're not late getting onto the concrete with this thing, or you'll really be pounding them in. 
For you guys looking to learn stamping and you don't want to fly out of state to take somebody's training class, you know, I do have tra my training course down in the link below with all kinds of training videos, very similar to this one, except they're a little bit more in detail. So if you want to really learn how to stamp from the comfort of your own home with my video training series, then check out that down below. You can, Tia's, Tia's getting to be pretty good at stamping too. She kind of knows her stuff now. She's been doing this three years. You can see now I'm standing on it. I'm a little bit more than halfway down the walkway and I'm already stepping on it because it's starting to set up pretty good. The one thing about using that powdered release though, it is pretty dirty. You get you get pretty messed up by the end of the stamping process, but it does wash off. I mean, Dawn dish detergent, some water, it washes right off. It cleans up good on, uh, you know, if you get a little on like the stairs here, or the the railings it'll it'll pressure wash right off that nice and easy so we don't concern ourselves too much with covering that stuff up I'm using what's called a flex mat right there up against the stairs so that one's really flexible a lot more so than that green one you see to the left and then if you need to touch up any joints you know you got we got some touch up tools we do with that We'll also touch them up when we come back to wash and saw. We can scrape those joints out and make sure they look nice, neat, and clean. So the next day we get back, generally it's the very next day, we'll saw cut our joints in. We like saw cutting here in Maine a lot better than joining with a hand joiner because a hand joiner tends to leave a bigger joint and it's more susceptible to scaling and peeling up here in Maine where we have a lot of freeze and thaw cycles versus you know in different parts of the country where you guys don't have winters like we do you know you can use your hand joiner tool all you want but up here you know for you guys who never pour and freeze and thaw I guess you wouldn't really know that but saw cutting is definitely better for joining here where we go through uh, some pretty harsh winters Now Darren's just washing it off. The first step to washing is just getting most of that powder off first and then we're going to dump on some water with some Dawn mixed in with it. Scrub it in almost like washing a car. We just want to remove most of the release powder so when we go to seal it, you know, the sealer will bond and it won't fail. So we'll scrub that in, give it a good rinse, usually two, a couple rinses. And that's pretty much going to do it for the rinsing. Then we've got to let it sit and dry out. But this is what it looks like after it's washed and cleaned. You can see the detail in the stamp. It leaves a really nice slate look on top. And then there's just enough release powder left on there to give it, give it like a two-tone effect. It, it looks really nice with the powdered release. That's that land and stone color, so it definitely won't be gray. Now this is what it looks like the next day. So this is two days after the pour. The concrete's dried out really nice and we're gonna get ready to seal it. The sealer I use is D1 from Decocrete. I'll have a link for that down in the description. You can see how the seal is gonna bring out the color. Now the first coat goes on really, really thin. You don't wanna build here. You just want to get a light coat on. We're going to end up putting, generally we'll put two to three coats on depending on how it looks. Really thin light coats like this. So we want to build up the sealer really, really slow. The first coat's pretty much going to sink right in. So that he's coating now for the second time. You can see how much the first one just soaked right in. But the second one's going to start leaving this sheen on top and really highlight the colors and make the colors pop. And that's basically how we seal the concrete right there. So we'll end up letting this dry for a few more minutes, put a third coat on, and then the finished look 
is going to be this right here is going to be the finished look so it come out looking really nice and, uh, and around the other side of the house guys this will be an upcoming video so make sure you subscribe to see this we were doing this patio here plus to the left that you can't see was another walkway that went down the other side of the house so a lot going on on this job thanks for watching guys we'll see you on the next one